June 1863, nearly 200,000 are dead and the American Civil War continues to rage on. General Robert E. Lee of the Confederate forces aims to move the war away from Virginia and win a major battle in the North. With the hopes of forcing the Union to surrender, Lee's 75,000 men strong army of Northern Virginia advanced into Pennsylvania. This would be the spark to cause the largest battle that has ever happened in American history. Opposing Lee, the Union Army of the Potomac under Major General George Meade had almost 100,000 men. The Union Army had been following Lee's army north since their defeat at Chancellorsville. As the Army of Northern Virginia advanced through Pennsylvania, a forward brigade of a P. Hill's 3rd Corps encounters some Union cavalry while marching to Gettysburg. This is reported to Henry Heath and two divisions are sent to determine the size of the Union force in the area. West of Gettysburg, John Buford's Union cavalrymen engaged, Confederate General Henry Heath's division. Union General John Reynolds' 1st Corps soon arrived to support the Union troops. Fighting intensifies. Union General John Reynolds is shot in the back of the neck and killed in this engagement. One of the Union Force's highest commanding generals was killed. This had a big impact on the morale of the men around him and so the Union Forces struggled to hold the line. Later on, the Union 11th Corps arrives to hold the line, but more and more Confederate troops also join the fight. Meanwhile, Confederate General Robert Rhodes' division arrives on Oak Hill nearby to the north. Confederate General Early arrives from the northeast. Engagement soon opened up. In the west, the Union fights on in the woods, but are eventually pushed back. Due to the Confederates' increasing pressure and the overextension of the Union line, the entire Union line collapses. Some escape near an unfinished railroad bed. Some are trapped in the streets of Gettysburg. The Confederates kill or capture all of the Union troops stuck in the streets of Gettysburg. Army reforms on Cemetery Hill where General Howard has left a brigade. 
the Confederate Army held position and did not attack the fleeing Union troops. The Union Army dug into the land south of Gettysburg. They utilized local terrain such as Cemetery Hill and Cemetery Ridge to form a strong defensive position. Other Union men form a defensive position at Culp's Hill. The Union Army overall at this point had around 70,000 men and was positioned in a big fishhook shape. Later that day, Union General Dan Sickles moves his Third Corps to the Peach Orchard where he thought his artillery would be more effective. However, he did not have the men to defend a position like this and had created a vulnerable gap in the Union Army's main line. Seeing this weakness, Confederate General Lee ordered an attack on the Union line. General Lee had to send in reinforcements from his 5th Corps. This opened gaps on his right flank. General Lee orders Confederate General Longstreet to take command of the main attack on the Union left. The Confederates advance, some encounter Union men at Devil's Den, and in some at the wheat field nearby. Just south of Devil's Den, Confederate troops from Alabama advance on Little Round Top, which is occupied by Union Colonel Strong Vincent. Both sides send in more reinforcements and control of Devil's Den changes three times. Confederate troops from Alabama and Texas attack Little Round Top again and again. Bayonet charge by Union troops from Maine sends them back for good and the Union's very left flank is secured. Just north of this, the battles at the Peach Orchard and the Wheat Field continue to rage on. In the Wheat Field, some of the bloodiest fighting of the battle took place. The 
Union put up a good effort into defending these positions. However, General James Barnes instructs the Union men to withdraw, abandoning the important wheat field to the Confederates. At the Peach Orchard, the Union troops are exposed from an assault from the north. This collapses the Union line, and the Confederates capture the Peach Orchard. More and more Union reinforcements arrive, but they were pushed back by the Confederates. By this point, over 14,000 men have lost their lives and the battle is far from over. At dusk, Confederate General Ewell marches on the Union right. The Union line is tired and thinly held. After bloody combat, the Union line here falls and portions of Cemetery Hill are captured by the Confederates. However, Union reinforcements arrive in time before Confederates can exploit their newly found position. Confederate General Johnson advanced on Culp's Hill with 4,500 men. Most of the Union troops here had been sent to other positions to reinforce elsewhere, so Union General Green, who was defending this position, only had 1,300 men. The fighting comes to a pause at 10 p.m. By this point, the battle is already the bloodiest in American history. General Lee hopes to take Culp's Hill in a morning assault, so he sends more men to assist General Johnson. However, General Meade ordered the troops he sent away from this position to return. The Union now had the superior numbers. For seven hours, the battle rages on. The Confederates are forced back due to their inferior numbers. Lee ordered a massive assault on the Union Center. General George Pickett leads the only fresh Confederate division and forms the core of the attack. Having anticipated this move, Union General Meade is ready. Lee bombards the Union defenses, hoping to thin their ranks. The Union artillery responds. This was the largest artillery barrage the Western Hemisphere had ever seen.
Pickett starts advancing on the Union troops with 12,000 men. Before they can reach the Union lines, the Confederates had to cross through one mile of open fields. Union artillery opens on the advancing troops. troops and prepared for the oncoming Confederates. A ferocious melee battle opens. These men didn't stand a chance if they reached Union lines. Less than half the Confederate attackers make it back to the main Confederate army. In hopes of attacking the Union rear, Confederate General Stewart's horsemen flank around the Union army. They are stopped east of Gettysburg by Union cavalrymen under General Gregg, south of Gettysburg. South of Gettysburg, Union cavalry hit the Confederate flank and rear with no success. Charges and counter charges occurred with no results for either side. The two armies suffered between 46,000 and 51,000 casualties. Union casualties were around 23,000, while Confederate casualties are more difficult to estimate. Many authors have referred to as many as 28,000 Confederate casualties. Then several months later, on November 19, 1863, Soldiers National Cemetery was dedicated for the burial of Union soldiers on Cemetery Hill. About 15,000 people were in attendance, and President Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address, in which he framed for the country the meaning of so much battlefield death. 